So do you think people, when you have a neural link with 10,000, 100,000 channels, most of the use cases will be communication with AI systems? Well, if assuming that the there are not, um, I mean, there's this there's solving basic uh, neurological issues that people have. You know, if they've got um, damaged neurons in their spinal cord or neck, or you know, um, as as is the case with our first two patients, then you know, this obviously the first order of business is solving fundamental neuron damage in the spinal cord, neck, or in the brain itself. Um, so, you know, our, our second um, product is called Blindsight, which is to enable people who are completely blind, lost both eyes or optic nerve, or just can't see at all, uh, to be able to see um, by directly triggering the neurons in the visual cortex. So we're, we're just starting at the basics here, you know, so it's like um, very, the, the simple stuff, uh, relatively speaking is uh, solving um, neuron damage. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it can also solve, uh, I think probably schizophrenia, you know, uh, if uh, people have seizures of some kind, it could probably solve that. Um, it could help with uh, memory. There, there's, so there's like a kind of a, a tech tree, if you will, <laughs> of like you got the basics. Um, like you need you need literacy before you can have you know lord of the rings <laughs> mm -hmm. you know <laughs> <laughs> got so, it do you uh, have letters and alphabet okay great uh words you know then eventually you get uh sagas so you know i think there's that there, there may be some you know things to worry about in, in the future but the first several years are really just solving basic neurological damage that like for people who have essentially complete or near complete loss of from the brain to the body, um, like Stephen Hawking would be an example, uh, the neural links would be incredibly profound. Because I mean, you can imagine if Stephen Hawking could communicate as fast as we're communicating, perhaps faster. Um, and that's certainly uh, possible. Probable, in fact, likely, I'd say. So there's a, a kind of dual track of medical and non-medical, meaning so everything you've well, talked about could be applied to people who are non-disabled in the future? The logical thing to do is, sensible thing to do is to start off solving um, basic uh, neuron damage issues. Yes. Because um, the, the, there's obviously some risk with a with new device. It's, you can't get the risk down at zero. Um, it's not possible. So you wanna have um, the highest possible reward Given that, given there's a certain irreducible risk, and if um, if somebody's able to have a profound improvement in their communication, um, that's worth the risk. As you get the uh, the risk down, yeah. As as you get the risk down, and when, once the risk is is down to to you know, you, you want, if you have like thousands of of people that have been using it for for years, and the risk is minimal, then um, perhaps at that point you could consider saying, okay, let's. Let's aim for augmentation. Now, now I think we, we we're actually going to aim for augmentation with people who have neur neuron damage. So we're not just aiming to give people a communication data rate equivalent to normal humans. We're aiming to give people who have, you know, quadriplegic or maybe have complete loss um, of the connection to the brain and body, a communication data rate that exceeds normal humans. Mm -hmm. I mean, while we're in there, why not? Let's give people superpowers. And the same for vision. As you restore vision, there could be yeah. aspects of that restoration that are superhuman. Yeah, at, at first the vision restoration will be uh, low res. Because um, you have to say like, how many neurons can you put in there and, how, and, and trigger? And and you can do things where you, you um, adjust the electric field. So like even if you've got say 10,000 neurons, it's not just 10,000 pixels because you can adjust the, the field between the the neurons and, and do them in patterns uh, in order to get, say, ha have say 10,000 electrodes effectively give you, uh, I don't know, maybe a, like having a, a megapixel or a 10 megapixel situation. Um, so, and, and then over time, I think you get to higher resolution than 
human eyes and you could also see in different wavelengths. So like Jordi LaForge from uh, Star Trek, you know, like the thing. You could just, like, do you want to see in radar? No problem. You can see ultraviolet, infrared, eagle vision, whatever you want. 